this is where we cut all our materials for, for our trim part. So you can currently see our cutter cab cam system cut into MGB seat faces. So we're currently doing a batch of those and you'll see that the cutter there is making our various different patterns here. So it looks like on here, Johnny, you've got some uh, MGB uh, seat squabs yep. uh, and some side bolsters maybe, yep. and some maybe some trim panel parts as well. Looks like you've got here um, a, uh, a, a, a radio piece here at the back. So you, you, you're really trying to maximize from uh, this sheet, this linear meter sheet of vinyl, how many pieces you can get from this single sheet. And looking here, there's not much wastage, is there? That's the idea, is to try and maximise as many parts into the cutter itself. In the old days, we used to do that by hand. We used to have cardboard cut out, we used to wear them with chalk. But now we're using more modern technology, and this will be doing both vinyl. And predominantly, this machine normally works on leather. We're currently just going through a batch of vinyl at the moment. So this cutting head uh, is a knife that's going through the vinyl. Um, when you go to cut leather, do you find that you have to change the blade more frequently because it's thicker and are you doing any tests to check for dragging? Yeah, good question. Yeah, so we, 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 we tend to have different knives that we fit for different operations. So depending on the thickness, we're using carpet at times and we're using foams. There needs to be a certain uh, a knife that's used, yes. Very good. And the, the actual bed of this machine looks really wide. We're not using very much of it at the moment. How wide is it? So the material is actually 1.4, but we can actually cut to 2.2. 2.2 meters. So a hide of leather, if you can imagine, will actually go over the whole of the, the bed on this side here. So you'll be uh, able to see that there's a little bit of leather there. So this is really taking the raw material, cutting it into the finished So this is really taking the raw material and you're starting to turn it into a Newton's product at this stage. So all the products, all the pieces that are cut from this piece of vinyl will then be bagged up, carefully bagged up, and then presumably given to other areas of the factory in that manufacturing Absolutely. process. Absolutely, this is the starting point where we cut our vinyl, our bones, our leathers, we'll then go on to different teams, whether it's the sewing team, or whether it's the panel team, the welding team, the individual team. And we've got another cutter here that's cutting carpet. So this is predominantly cutting various different types of carpet. And again, you'll see from our, you'll see from our lay here, that it's maximizing the whole roll. So not only will it be cutting certain tunnels, it will all be cutting other parts of the carpet that may go into this and other pieces. Looks terrific. And you've got a layer of, of PVC sheeting over the top of the park, uh, the, over the top of the pile to protect the pile from um, from dust and contaminants within the factory. Or is that Absolutely. another reason? Absolutely. That, that's one reason. The, the main reason is we've got a suction under here, and you can just see there that it actually sucks the carpet down so that we get a clean cut. Our sewing department now, which is the engine room of Newton Commercial, everything comes through here from the cutting department. And this is where we sew our seat covers that go on to, to be fitted into complete seats. And we've currently got some MGB Suffolks that we're making here. So all the cut parts that you would have seen downstairs, they're now compiled and built and put together by the sewing department. So Carrie, as you can see just over her shoulder, she's currently working with the thread there just to get the right tension by the look of things, is just putting the finishing touches to what looks like a squab cover. So a lot of attention to detail. We've got spec sheets on screens there so they can refer to them. Someone as wonderful as Carrie doesn't need spec sheets. She's got it all from memory. Like most of the girls here, we just call it a reference point. But all the girls will be doing various different types of covers throughout the factory. We could be doing carpets, we could be doing seat covers, we could be doing some door panels, and that will be predominantly MG, uh, Mini Triumph, BMC range of products. So we're currently in the seat fitting department, and Tom Balls, our seat fitting guru of TV fame, magazine fame, you name it, he's been everywhere. So we're currently working on a MGA Deluxe. Just talk us through some of the stuff that you can do to get the finish up here. So the first thing that we did was to put the woods on the first stage. So you can see they're all screwed on all the way around the seat um, as a fix and strip to actually affix the cover to. Um, just like that. 
Um, so that's, that's the first step to uh, get the woods on. The second step is then to spring the seat, so either the Ferrelli straps, that's the, that's the next step. Um, just centering it up, making sure you've got like your centre mark to, to line the foams up with. Um, and that's a case of building it up, so layer by layer, so you've got your white foam is the first layer. Um, the cover then gets strung on, so it gets strung on using the, uh, the straps as a kind of anchorage point. Um, once that's strung in, you then build up the horseshoe shape by using the, the, green, the green piece that comes in the kit that then lays across the top. So that's, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, we've layered it all up and we're now just turning the edges of the seat cover and uh, fixing it to the tack strip. So Tom, how much time has gone into just making the seat back at this point, would you estimate? Um, at this stage, so I started yesterday at about um, two o'clock, yeah, something like that, and we're now at one o'clock, so we've been, yeah, we've been about probably... A day, roughly. Yeah, yeah, probably six, five or six at the moment. Um, yeah, we should be nearing completion towards the end of the day. And that would just be the one seat or both? That, that will be both. So you're looking at about eight, between eight and 10 hours for a pair. Well, I can see there's an awful lot of work that's gone into that and the quality of work that you're doing is very high. Yeah. And I, I, why, why would you want to, as an owner, buy the individual components and try and, uh, try and build up your own deluxe seat? But quite frankly, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I don't think I could do that with 10 attempts. I've, I've done three this month. So that's, you know, that's a good indication to point that people do like to have them fitted by us purely because, you know, they arrive ready just to bolt in. Mm. Um, some people are more, it's more about the building part of it. So a lot of people like to say, well, I built it, I painted it, I, you know, I done the trim. Um, so that'll be the main reason people buy it in kit form because that's their, their kind of hobby and yeah. they, they want to have a go themselves. So. And these seat frames, these are brand new frames, aren't they, they're for the MGA? New, so they're all, they're all bent in-house, all the tubing's bent um, and welded and powder coated, so yeah. That's going to take Tom, as he said, you know, a few days to do. Good luck if you're doing it yourself. You've got to be good at what you do. Mm -hmm. But that is the finish you'll get if you go to a company like Newton Commercial. You know, really, I just want to touch them because they, the, the quality um, speaks for itself. You can see the grain on the leather. Um, it's, it's well formed the whole way around. Um, there's no puckering. Everything feels tight. It's somewhere that you'd want to sit isn't it? And Which they're on brand new seat frames too. Absolutely. And do you know what? They're probably even better than they came out of the, the trim shop back in the day. Some of the products we make, you know, are, are, are absolutely awesome. We've got modern techniques now that can just make it, oh, look perfect. Mm. So we're now in our board cutting department and this is predominantly where we produce cut boards that go into the main factory. And as you can see here, we've got a load of MGB pre-cut card that is gonna be now sent over to the main factory. It's cut on our press, and then it's gonna be sent over to our main factory where it's gonna be produced into the wonderful door panels. So that press uh, literally has a guillotine-like form and stamps out the shape. Yes, essentially we've got die cut tools, original die cut tool, back 30, 40, 50, 60 years. We produce our own, um, and essentially the board's put on, and it's just cut by the 50-ton press. Very good. And you're able to stamp uh, from one big sheet. Are you getting sort of uh, three or maybe four panels from a big sheet of, yeah, of millboard? Yeah, that's, that's board. spot on. Yeah, we, yeah. we try and maximise each sheet and reduce the waste and then we recycle the waste afterwards. So we're currently in our uh, panels department and they're predominantly making anything that is hardboard, uh, millboard and also plastic parts. And we're actually doing some MGF door pods here and Emma, our trimmer, is just currently using... What products are you using there? Well, this is a lever, and this is um, a uh, metal uh, door pod. Yep. So it's the bottom part of the door pod. And uh, we've just put some compact adhesive on there, yeah. and then we, we turn that onto the other side, so you've got a nice smooth finish on the yeah. inside there. And just trim off. And so that's where the door, door handle goes. Yep, yep. 
and that's all contact on. Yeah, so it just shows how you do that there. So we use contact adhesive because it gives you an opportunity just to let it dry for 30, 40 seconds and you can play with it, you can use it. If you use a really heavy hot glue, it tends to be one or two tries. With this one, you can manipulate it a little bit more and it becomes tacky. So you're just teasing out any of the, um, the creases there, Emma, just to make sure it's smooth and contours to the form. Yeah? You see it's quite thick, so it has a little bit of a, a habit of wanting to press. Yeah. And the contact adhesive, um, to, to activate it, you're putting it both on the vinyl and also on the form as well? Yes, it's correct, yeah. OK, and then you, your workability, you've got sort of, you've got 10 to 30 minutes to play with it, really, uh, you've probably before got a couple it's gone of minutes. Oh, just of a minutes. couple yeah, of minutes. it just goes off, it just reacts with the air. You're, um, you're using industrial strength contact there, adhesive there. there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But it gives us a chance just to, to just to rework it. You know, leather is a natural product, it is quite thick. So certainly, you know, originally it was on there, or it's an upgrade, you know, we just need to make sure that's smooth, because it ultimately needs to fit into that door. Yeah, and how long have you been doing this sort of work, Emma? Um, I've been doing it for... Uh, and it's actually quite, um, you know, it's fiddly work and very skilled handcraft work. Is this, this what you're doing most of the time? Is it, is it contact right. adhesive work <laughs> that you're doing most, most of the time? Or is it a, a different, different jobs around the factory, as it were? All sorts to do with panels. So it will be um, from door panels to, see Dave just doing there, to doing some armrests that go onto a rear quarter part of a panel there, so it's anything to do with panels in this part What materials do you not like working with? Oh, great. I don't mind, actually. It's pretty <laughs> easy to go, really. I like leather. It's quite a nice, more of a challenge to work with. We're doing some moss miners there, you know, rear quarters, and we're using various different woods and materials to replicate the look. We've got a skiver machine here. This takes off the back of a le the leather, because the leather will be two or three mil thick sometimes, so we'll need to take off just the back of the... So that thins the leather to, so that it's more workable on the forms that you're applying it to. Absolutely. So it's, it's got a scraping tool in there, is it? You pass it through the machine, it lifts off and not splitting the leather, but actually thinning it at it the back. It just thins it out, yeah. Uh, and it just makes it a lot, a lot easier. But predominantly, some of the other products that we use, and we've got spray booths where we're using, you know, water-based glue, we're using staplers, and this is what would have been used back in the day. So it's it's replicating, you know, some of the skills that were done back in the, you know, in the BMC, BMC days. So what is it you're making over here, if you don't mind me asking? Looks like you, you've got a, a form for a gear lever. That's a uh, DR6 uh, speed panel. Very nice. And you've got that. You've got some um, foam-like material in there, have you? Just to yeah, just to thicken it up. Three millimeter headline foam. Yeah. So that gives you that padded look to it. Yes. And then you have to. Do you attach the bracket onto the back? That uh, mild yes, steel bracket. That's, that's all done beforehand. So we're currently at the moulding part of the factory. This is where we manufacture our formed carpets and we do this across the board. MGF, for example, is a, is a good mover. And this is where we get, heat up our carpet, use a male and female press tool to press out the carpets. You can see down here, we've got some preformed carpets and that's the shape that they'll get. That then needs to be, uh, hill mats will need to be sewn onto that, edges will need to be sewn onto that, but that will essentially fit right into the floor pan. You've got a wooden form here that you've you've manufactured through a special process uh, and you, you keep these form tools in storage uh, for each different carpet set. There's a lot of time that goes into producing one of these tools. How long would you say it takes you to, from um, a request from a large customer, say, to develop a new moulded carpet set to, to having a product? Six to nine months is how long it takes. So we'll take in vehicles, we'll have the vehicle for three months, we'll make a tool in for three months and we'll test for three months. Mm. Thankfully, the older classic cars, um, they don't tend to have formed carpets because formed carpets um, are easier for modern OEMs to fit them straight in. It's less, it's labour saving. They're not having to deal with individual strips and contact adhesive and stick them in. They can literally just lay them into the floor and secure them with clips. But from your point of view, uh, reproducing those carpets for maybe, you know, 
not so much the 60s and 70s classics, but certainly the 80s, 90s, Absolutely. and modern classics, as we would say, there's going to become an increasing demand to make more and more of these tools. Yeah, so we're working on Escorts, on Peugeots, you know, so that those carpets that, that were produced in that era were moulded, so we're just simply replicating that. But a lot of the earlier cars were flat carpets. Mm, yeah, it's very good. And the, and the material that those modern OEM uh, companies have been using uh, the thickness of that material do you do you take an opportunity to improve the quality and grade of what's being used yeah it's a double-edged sword so sometimes the original wool materials that were used or some of the, 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 the carpet materials back in the day had a different substance we're now having to use modern equivalent so yes it is able to mold but sometimes the color is not the exact pigmentation um, it's very difficult to replicate that, certainly with the newer materials. So it's a bit of, you know, it, it works both ways, but essentially what's on the market now uh, is, 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 is what we can get it closest to that original materials. Well, speaking from experience, I can tell you that I've fitted one of your um, carpet sets for an MGTF okay. on my modern 2005 manufactured MG Rover MGTF. Um, because the carpets uh, on, on those cars, they do wear, particularly on the heel areas, um, and it needed replacing. And I was really delighted to find that it fitted exceptionally well. It really does look smart. It's a testament to the effort that's gone into making the tool correctly in the first instance. All aspects of the fit, um, in, from the instructions to the individual components that were supplied to make the job easier, um, really uh, has led to a very good quality DIY installation and I later showed that car with a Newton commercial carpet set uh, fitted over the top of um, one of your uh, soundproofing kits which was overlaid over the top of Dyna Liner and Dynamat which is a product that um, we sell lots of at MGOC spares and accessories because we, we like to enhance the overall insulation and sound absorbing um, characteristics of these cars. Uh, it does come at the expense of, uh, of slightly heavier, um, heavier materials, but it's well worth doing that where you start with the base floor pan, you put the Dyna, line, uh, Dyna mat on, then the Dyna liner over the top, and then all the Newton products over the top of that. You end up with a really good finish, really good plush um, luxury car feel. So one of the reasons that we've managed to build up such a good customer base and build such a good product is we've been going for 40 years, so we've got ingrained within the business and the people in-house training. So we're constantly training, constantly backfilling uh, the knowledge and we'll have it automated onto various spec sheets will all be now automated onto tablets and we pass those skills down. So it's it's really down to our patterning that we did originally, you know, that which we did my mum and dad with John White. They did a lot of the patterns, so we've got all those. And we just spend a lot of time on training and getting it right. You know, you'll find that it's important not to rush things. Our motto is to get it right first time because if we can put the passion into those products, you know, the guys and girls that are buying these products will then see it when they when they um, um, and put it into their cars and tell their friends.